Wait, was that a bite? I think he just bit me. So where we're heading is essentially one of my favorite places to find uh, recluses, actually. They like to be in and around old buildings, and I actually have access to exactly one of those, so hopefully we should see some. Look, I'm not an expert, but working with animals is what makes me feel alive. Thing is, I need to get better and more comfortable with working with venomous animals. Last week, the cotton mouths proved a little too much for me to handle right now, and if I want to work up to catching a rattlesnake, I need to figure that out. So I want to try a different approach. I'm a lot more comfortable with invertebrates and I've got a lot of experience with spiders. So my thought is if I practice with a venomous spider, that'll help steady my nerves with venomous animals in general. And hopefully I'll be a lot more calm and collected with the snake hook next time we try it. So that's why today I'm going to free handle a brown recluse spider. So this is the spot, huh? Yeah. We gotta have a key to get to this right Recluses are gonna like really dark, shady habitats where they can hide under stuff. In fact, you'd think they'd live under like logs and rocks in uh, in nature, but I'm not even sure what a recluse would live in in natural habitat anymore. Generally speaking, they're gonna live in dwellings. They're gonna live underneath basically just random junk in or near dwellings. It's hot. Zach's been telling me about how you really don't want to flip over tin during the summer. Tin that's left out in the open becomes like an oven. He, uh, Zach describes it as a volcano underneath. Um, reason this is relevant to what we're doing today is this warehouse is basically a giant piece of tin. Uh, it's probably 90, 95 degrees outside. I don't, I don't want to take a wager as to how hot it is in here, but we really gotta get in and get out because it's stifling. Nice. Wow, look at that. Doesn't matter. Just need one? Yeah, just one is fine. Okay. Oh, you got him. Throw him. Trust me. Wait. He's in. You got him. Yes. All right, now this is a dream spider for me. We got a recluse, but um, I'm gonna have to keep my presentation really brief. The heat in here is dangerous. You know, you can see I'm dripping sweat. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm having trouble composing my words because it is just so oppressively hot. This is a brown recluse. And if I'm not mistaken, this is actually an invasive species of brown recluse. Not the typical one we see, but this is the Mediterranean recluse just as venomous just as prolific here in these shadowy environments that is an insane little spider now the craziest thing about these guys is their venom is a lot like the snakes you see around here unlike the black widow or some a neurotoxin take a bite from one of these guys and your entire cellular system is going to be in trouble the hemotoxin that this guy packs actually this female um, this is a female spider, will completely degrade your skin, your blood cells, everything in its path. Now, of course, the question always is, with how dangerous these animals are, is aggression, right? No spiders here in the US are actually gonna bite you just to be mean. So what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna chance to take this spider, put it on my bare hand, and see if the brown recluse is actually aggressive to humans. Here we go. The recluse was actually being pretty difficult to get out of the jar and I almost used that as an excuse not to handle it. See, I'm a lot more nervous going into this than I thought I was gonna be. You know, I, I might be in a little over my head, but I think sometimes if you're going after a stupid, crazy dream, sometimes you have to get in a little bit over your head or, you know, you're never gonna actually increase your comfort zone, so. We're gonna do this. There we go. All right. Brown recluse is on my hand. Just knowing the power of the venom that this thing packs, there is a different level of focus that I have to have. Like there's even like a gut feeling of like, there are real stakes here. And she is basically just running away from the light here. The reason they're called recluses is they like to hide in the shadows away from everything. 
I don't want to make any sudden moves to really aggravate her. The more calm and composed you are during an interaction, the more calm and composed the animal is going to be. If I get too shaky or I make a sudden move because I'm hot and you know, maybe I brush sweat away from my eyes too quickly and it just sees that shadow, it could bite. This is the real deal. A significantly venomous spider on my bare palm. <sighs> Wait, was that a bite? I think it just bit me. As the spider was resting on my index finger, I felt a little scratch right where its petty palps and, and fangs are. That, that might have been a bite. I don't know what to expect with a spider like this because those fangs are so small, I don't know if the initial bite would hurt or not. I don't feel any pain and I didn't put any pressure on the spider. And the reason this is important is there's there's two things that this may have been, if not a, a bite. Something a lot of people don't know is that spiders can dry bite. Full on envenomating bites will come if you are putting real pressure on the spider and it feels threatened for its life. Now this spider probably does not feel threatened for its life. I'm not touching it. I'm not putting any extra pressure on it. Just like anything else I've handled like this, this spider is, is likely stressed because I am a very large animal and there's light and recluses hate the light. So it may have been a dry bite. Honestly though, what it might have also been is not even a bite at all. And what I may have felt is the spider actually drinking. It is extremely hot in here. And even though this is where the spider has been living, I have to imagine the spider is hot as well. And because it's so hot, I am just drenched in sweat. Like you can see me dripping. It is possible that since my hands are also very sweaty, there is salt water here. That's water and electrolytes, things the spider would very well need to thrive in this environment. And it may have just been drinking some of the sweat off my finger. Um, all I felt was a scratch. I didn't feel a poke. I felt a scratch, like something kind of just brushed my skin there. Here's the important thing, right? Whether this is a bite or not, what happens if you're bitten by a brown recluse? And are they actually deadly? People's bodies can react pretty severely to recluse venom. But the thing is, the reason I started with this guy you know, I'm working my way up. I'm trying to get myself more comfortable with venomous animals and work up to a rattlesnake. The reason I did a recluse first is because the likelihood that you die from a recluse bite, even without any medical attention, is very low. Bites that are actually necrotic, where the skin rots away, are less than one in a thousand. You are more likely to have a very nasty welt and some flu-like symptoms. I'm recording well after I handled it. My hand's still fine. No necrosis, no bite, no welt. Handling a brown recluse is, is nerve wracking. Uh, it's, it's very nerve wracking, but I can feel myself getting more confident with venomous animals. I think, I think next step is gonna be a widow. If you wanna find out what actually does happen when a spider bites you, I did an experiment with wolf spider venom to see how it affects human blood. You can see that video right here. I hope to see you there, but until then, get out there and find your adventure.